everyone. Today for our leveled daily reader, we are going to be reading A Town in Trouble by Kent Carlson and it's illustrated by Kristen Sora. It was a hot summer day in the town of Bolivar. It was the kind of day when people usually sit in the shade drinking cool cups of water, but this day was anything but normal. People were sitting outside packing up all of their things. There was something much worse than the heat of the sun on people's minds. Madison, one of the town children, was thinking about why everyone was leaving. For the past week, he had heard the townspeople tell many stories about a giant who wrecked everything in his path, and they had just learned the giant was coming towards their town. Madison walked to the middle of the town and looked up at the clock tower. This would be the first thing the giant would try to destroy. No one would be able to take the tower to a new home. While Madison was looking up the tower, he heard a voice. Come up here, boy. It was the clockmaker. Madison remembered when the townspeople were building the clock tower, the clockmaker oversaw every last detail. Madison entered and climbed up the stone stairs that spiraled all the way to the clockmaker's room at the top of the tower. Inside, the clockmaker worked at her desk. Madison thought... Blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. Madison thought it was strange that the clockmaker wasn't packing up to leave the town. Hmm, I wonder why. Come in, the clockmaker said. I was watching you look up at the clock tower. I'm sure you know what will happen if the giant comes. Yes, Madison said sadly. He approached the clockmaker and looked at her drawings. They looked like a picture of a wooden man. This can scare off the giant, but it will work only if the giant thinks our wood man is real. We can only let him see it at night. Otherwise, we will know it is made out of wood and harmless. Do you think it will be terrifying enough? Madison asked. It might be the size of a giant who is... It must be at least the size of the giant who is tremendous. He is at least ten times the height of a regular person. The head of the one man will be hollow where two people will be holding out burning tor torches. The giant will think they are eyes of fire. There will also be a chorus of townspeople shouting nearby, pretending to be the one man's voice. We are still working on it, so if the giant comes soon, all is lost. I will stall the giant and make sure he comes only at night, Madison said bravely. Before the clockmaker could protest, Madison left the tower. Madison walked on the road until he came to the town of Salis. It was in ruins. No one was there. Ruins means that it was left in a mess. It is obvious that the giant has been here. Look at these giant footprints, Madison thought. The footprints were so deep that Madison wondered if he would be able to get out if he fell into one. Madison followed the footprints. The footprints led Madison to the top of a hill. He heard a great snoring. Then he saw the giant's body resting on some grass. Madison picked up a few rocks and hid behind a tree. He started throwing rocks at the giant. When the third rock hit the giant, he opened his eyes and called out angrily, Who's there? Madison laughed loud enough for the giant to hear him and shouted, You are a foolish giant. And you are a fool for angering me, cried the giant. Let me tell you why you are a fool, Madison said. The giant appeared to be listening. Madison continued, you have wasted energy wrecking a town and then left its greatest treasure. The giant's eyebrows rose. Treasure? What treasure? The most amazing treasure lies deep below the city walls. There are piles of gold, silver, and diamonds, Madison said. The giant was confused. He wondered if he should trust what he heard. He decided to take a chance and search for the treasure. The giant walked back to Silas and kicked down its walls. Then he started the long task of digging holes where the walls used to be. Madison watched the giant for a while and then ran back to Bolivar. When Madison got back, he looked at the giant wooden figure that was being built. He found the clockmaker and told her how he had tricked the giant. Good work, Madison, she said. We should be finished in three days. On the fourth day, I want you to go to the giant and lead him back here at night. Remember, if he arrives during the day, he will know the wooden man is fake. Late on the fourth day, Madison walked back to Salas. He watched the giant dig until night came. Then he shouted to him, Foolish one, you are digging in the wrong town. The treasure you seek is in Bolivar, the town east of here. The giant was enraged. The digging he had been doing was all for nothing. He jumped out of the pit he had dug and ran towards Bolivar. Madison followed the giant as fast as he could, but eventually he fell behind. 
When Madison got closer to the town, he started to smell smoke. He was afraid that the giant was setting the town on fire. When Madison neared the town, he saw the giant looking up at a huge figure with burning red eyes. Then he heard a booming voice shouting, Go away! Those words were repeated over and over again. Madison could see the giant trembling. Please don't hurt me, the giant cried. I will leave you and your town alone. Then the giant ran quickly away, and everything shook when his feet hit the ground. The plan had worked. The next day, the whole town of Bolivar celebrated their victory over the giant. In the crowd of happy townspeople, Madison found the clockworker. It worked! You saved the town, Madison said to the clockmaker. But we couldn't have done it without you, said the clockmaker. All right, guys, so I'm going to leave those response questions in the description box below. You can either have the choice of discussing them with someone, your parent, your dog, your brother, your sister, whoever you want to talk about these questions with, or you can record them in a journal and write your answers that way or on a sheet of paper. Whatever you would like to do is fine with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this level read a lot today, and I will see you for another one tomorrow. Bye, everyone.